Bears. And I, looking back on it, you know, you hate doing it, but it was a time of teaching you how to be obedient. And even though we hate picking those blackberries, we enjoyed those blackberry cobbles she made. We also had to pick apples. The boys would shake the apples out of the tree and the girls got to pick them up. And by those apples, we got to enjoy apple butter, apple butter during the wintertime. So this morning, I'm just going to sing I Remember Mama in tribute to all of our mothers and grandmothers that have gone on before us and thank them for the lessons taught while they were here with us.
being a mother, happy Mother's Day. So, um, before I get started, I'm going to try to make fun of someone. Um, Mr. Orr. I lay it understood the assignment. The ladies speaking, where I'm in at? Where I'm in? What, what are you in? Y'all scared? <laughs> now me and scared. Go ahead, ladies. Go ahead. So, and, and the theme of this, for this is, what our grandmothers taught us. I didn't get to meet my maternal grandmother, but I saw the fruit that she bared. The fruit that she bared come in the form of dark jeans, Sweet as humble pie, sweet as humble pie. But she was taught to be steadfast and immovable. She was resilient. I remember the, you have to put a V in front of it, the Zenobia Thompson. She told you what she wanted to tell you, and she said what she said, and she meant what she said, and she left it at that. And my mother, who her sister said they got the whipping based on her because the only thing she wanted to do was read. But in all of that, the fruit that it bare brought forth a new generation of women that were steadfast, unmovable, that depended on God, that trust Him and everything that they were going through. So what your mother taught you, think about it during this service here today and enjoy it and thank them for the lessons that they have taught you. So at this time, if you can please stand as we do our call to worship. And we'll write the Apostles' Creed together. We'll write the Apostles' Creed together. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered on the cross of Tyler, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended to hell. The third day he rose again.
next, please. Father God, we thank you for this day, Lord God. We Again, we thank you for the mothers that are represented here today, Lord God. Lord God, we thank you for the lessons that we were taught, Lord God. Lord God, we thank you for the lessons that we are able to teach the next generation that comes through, Lord God. Lord God, we thank you. Lord God, we just cannot thank you enough for everything that you have done for us, Lord God. Even if you have to do nothing else, Lord God, you have already done enough. Lord God, again, as we go through this 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 service today, Lord God, let hearts that are heavy be lifted, Lord God, knowing that mothers have gone on to glory, Lord God, but knowing that they are looking down on us and saying, thank you for my child, Lord God, that I have raised well, Lord God. And again, Father God, we thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
in 2022 and 2023. The basic scholarship awards is $4,000. I won't read it anymore. It is listed for you. If you have anyone that would like to apply, please do apply. Mental Health Awareness Month. Um, and it tells us about mental health. So many times we as black and youth don't want to talk about mental health, but mental health is prevalent all around. Maybe in your home and maybe somebody that you know. These are the, the known facts, the breakdown of the stigma and the practice self-care. Please take this back home with you and read it at your convenience, but remember that mental health is a very, very important uh, thing that you may have in your household. Several other announcements. On behalf of the men's ministry, they would like to present all mothers with a token of love. You may get that in the fellowship hall after morning service. Also remember, ladies and gentlemen, mothers, grandmothers, we also are celebrating grandmothers and if you and mothers. So before you leave, as you're on your way out, there are pictures that you need to just look at. It is a beautiful, awesome thing, and it is in the fellowship hall. So please take an opportunity on your way out to take and look at it. Roses are red, violets are blue. Happy, happy Mother's Day to each of you. Elder Ann Coleman would like for all the women in the church to see her after the morning worship service to pick up a small token of love from her and Amazon. Happy Mother's Day, and I hope you have a wonderful, will have a wonderful day. This comes from Reverend Van Pelt. And Happy Mother's Day to all the women of Mount Olive. This comes from the AC of the Presbyterian of Shaw. We do have a lost and found here at Mount Olive. If someone dropped this on the way in, please see me afterwards. We also have several more things that is in the lost and found. So if you have lost something on your way here, after you got here, before you left, please check with me. We have glasses, we have a little bit of this and that. So we have that, and please check with me. Or I drink whatever she is to put the session. Time to come home in the service of the Lord, one night in person revival by St. Paul Baptist Church. They are having a revival, a one night revival on, on May 16, 2020. Please mark your calendars from 7 to 8.30 p.m. The location is 7200 Robinson Church Road in Charlotte, North Carolina. Join them for a special night of revival in the presence of the Lord, Monday, May 16th at 7 p.m. Limited seating, so they're please asking you to register. About this event, the pastor and Saint Paul, of St. Paul Presbyterian Church family would like to invite you to their annual revival. Due to the pandemic, we have not been able to have a revival, so our theme is time to come home in the service of the Lord. Our guest evangelist for the occasion is the Reverend Lorenzo R. Small, St. Pat Senior, pastor of the First United Presbyterian Church. Um, they are asking that you wear a mask, but there is an in-person contact that you can call and see the service online. I will post this on our bulletin board for anyone that is interested. Before I would go from this podium, I would like to wish all the brothers a Mother's Day. And the Presbyterian women have given us scarves and envelopes. I don't know about you, but I think I'm cute. <laughs> <laughs> so with that being said, with all the mothers, please stand up and give yourself a hand because this is a beautiful thing.
And at this time, we do ask that the ushers come forward for our offering, please. And if you have weren't able to do, uh, place your offering in the basket prior to coming in, they're coming down so you can wave your envelope and they'll be glad to stop you and get it for you. Lord God, we pray for those that gave and those that had a desire to give but had not, Lord God, that on next time they will be able to do that. Again, we thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Because you have made the Lord, who is my refuge, even the Most High, your dwelling place. No evil shall befall you, nor shall any plague come near your dwelling. For he shall give you his, for he shall give his angels charge over you, to keep you in all your ways. In their hands they shall bear you up, lest you dash your foot against the stone. You shall read, excuse me, you shall tread upon the lion and the cobra. The young lion and the serpent you shall trample underfoot. Because he has set his love upon me, therefore I will deliver him. I will set him high, set him on high, because he has known my name. He shall call upon me, and I will answer him, and I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. 
With long life, I will satisfy him and show him my salvation. God's word for God's people.
So before I begin, I need to talk about how my condition. I have a head cold. I've been on three yesterday. I just spent all day taking medicine. It's gotten like this. You know, I have been a little But I uh, held myself together and I just prayed, Lord, let me have a voice that don't sound too much like a frog today. But I, 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 my husband said, well, go on. You, you going? And I said, yes, I'm going. He said, well, you got this. But that's him. He encourages me all the way. Thank you, buddy. In my message today, I would like to bring a word of encouragement and hope. As we look at the stories of the women of Jesus' family tree, we are able to witness a legacy of faith, resilience, and the perseverance of women. From this year's Presbyterian Women's Bible Study, What My Grandmothers Taught Me by Joyce McKitchen Walker, I will share learning from the women in Jesus' family tree. This study is all about the challenging circumstances women must navigate and the risks women must take to protect and raise their families in the faith. Their narratives emphasize the omnipotent, omnipresent God who watches over us in times of stress and fear. And the endings to their stories remind us that God is able to turn every circumstance around for our long range food. Their stories can inform our faith and inspire our actions as followers of Christ. We all have a variety of memories of our own grandmothers. Who are your grandmothers in faith? Think of all these women, the matriarchs who poured into your life. What do you remember about them? What do they all have in common? Was it that habit of singing or humming around the house? Was it their delicious meals? Or was it their prayers for family and their compassion for neighbors? Perhaps it was that Sunday hat. And speaking of hats, women have worn many for thousands of generations. Mentor, innovator, advocate, reformer, coach, prayer warrior, teacher, preacher, listener, motivator, cook, cleaner, chauffeur, just to name them. Mothers, church mothers, grandmothers, women, we are the original multitaskers. We have always been involved in a variety of work, laboring for good causes, putting out fires wherever they pop up, taking care of God's creation, caring for the needy, defending and upholding justice, exercising our spiritual gifts in service to the community and to the church, and that church joining in and making preparations for worship and fellowship. Individually or in groups, women are always productive, unique, excuse me, uniquely and consistently productive. And we have all been blessed by generations of women, whether it was mom, mother, mama, mommy, big mom, nana, Gigi, Nona, Mimi, whatever we call them, or whatever they answer to, our lives have been enriched, strengthened, and ensured by the prayers, courage, and sacrifice of family matriarchs. Not too long ago, there was a movie out, Hidden Figures. Did anybody watch Hidden Figures? I'm going to read the book, because you know that deep stuff out of the movie. I read the book. But that movie revealed a phenomenal, true story of black female mathematicians at NASA whose calculations helped fuel some of America's greatest achievements in space. All this time, we saw white, Anglo-Saxon, Protestant men whenever they talked about the space race. Decades before the digital age, women, black women, were the solution. These hidden figures experience racial and gender discrimination. They suffered treatment as second-class citizens, which was the norm. 
They were denied recognition of their skills. They were underestimated, blocked from advanced education and advancement in the workplace as well. Nevertheless, the truth has come to light and they are no longer hidden. They navigated the unfavorable circumstances of their time and they used their gifts in service to our country. Struggles then, struggles now. And as we look at the women of biblical times, they held no status. Women were not celebrated. Their gifts went unnoticed. Women were not appreciated. Their contributions were taken for granted. <coughs> Women were not validated. Their lives were unimportant. So it's not surprising that Matthew begins his gospel with a list of Jesus' ancestors, mostly men. But in this list, we find the names of some rather unusual women, Jesus' grandmothers. The standout names in this family tree are those of the women. There are only five mentioned, and they have been placed deliberately to catch our attention. They are an odd five, not the names we might expect, like Sarah, Rebecca, Rachel, Leah, the great matriarchs but rather than take us to the sweet, retired Sunday school teacher times, Matthew takes us to visit the immigrant woman who still struggles to speak English, or shockingly to the retired woman of the night who is talked about in whispers in the church. Don't say it out. <laughs> Let's look at Tamar. Tamar's story takes us into the world of a powerless but resourceful outsider. From her, we learn that worldly power is not absolute, that God's promises can be fulfilled through the most unexpected people and in very surprising ways. We learn that those the world considers worthy of contempt can show us God's grace if we only have eyes to see. Tamar used her wits to turn the tables on those who had oppressed her. A victim of prejudice, she recognized the importance of the wildest story, and she acted for the good of the family line. Tamar overcame social limitations and secured the enviable position of matriarch of the tribe. And then there was Rahab. She's a socially unaccepted outsider, but a woman of faith. Rahab was the mother of Moab, Boaz. This marginalized woman was intelligent and strong. She recognized the power of the God of Israel. When God's own people were melting with fear, her wit and presence of mind allowed God's plan to unfold. Her story confirms that God saves those of the past. He redefines us from shame, fear, rejection, and hopelessness. Nothing can keep us from the saving grace of God through Christ. Amen. Amen. The story we know so well about Ruth shows us how ordinary people can bring about divine outcomes when they deal with each other with loyal love. Two empty, bereft women are filled and redeemed through the honesty, care, humility, and compassion that they show one another. One of Jesus' Gentile ancestors, Ruth's story is about the providence of God. Her narrative is an example of God's covenant faithfulness and how he restores those who look to him with hope. Ruth is praised for her faithfulness. In the end, she is shown to be the main reason King David's family line can continue. Bathsheba is also on the family tree. She's not named. Instead, she's defined by her relationship to a man, the wife of Uriah. Bathsheba steps onto the stage and exhibits an ability to influence him. It was through her redemption that Bathsheba was a faithful Hebrew woman 
who embodied both the wisdom and warrior virtues of a queen. And as a queen, she provided for her son's reign by grooming Solomon in the ways of the Lord. From her life, we learned that although we may feel caught up in a chain of events, we are still responsible for the way we participate in them. I'm going to read that again. Although we may feel caught up in a chain of events, we are still responsible for the way we participate in them. As a, excuse me, a sin may seem like one small seed, but the harvest of consequences is beyond measure. I'm going to read that one again. <laughs> a sin may seem like one small seed, but the harvest of consequences is beyond measure. The third lesson from Bathsheba is God is able to bring about good when we turn to Him. When we lean on our own understanding, we tend to make a mess. But when we turn to God, He can fix it. Finally, God's forgiveness of sin is total. Hallelujah. Amen. Last but not least, there's Mary. How can we talk about Jesus without mentioning his mother? Some reference to Mary. Courageous Mary, who says yes. Her experience of motherhood includes a bewildering birth, a risky escape as a refugee, and a message from prophets that warns of the death of her son. She meets these difficulties with thoughtfulness and steadfastness. Mary is the model disciple for all followers of Christ. She allowed God to work in her despite the risk and pointed others to faith in Jesus. This is just a glimpse at the unnoticed women through whose stories we see the kingdom of God, but the last are made first. We see the hidden figures of Jesus' family tree who made history happy by stepping into uncomfortable places, by securing their survival and the survival of future generations by relying on the rewards of faithfulness. These women are not all Gentiles. None of them started with their power. And for these women, there was no expectation of worthy contribution or leadership. But despite the, distress, the, the oppression of their culture, they would be led by the Holy Spirit to think and act to fulfill the will of God. They all used their quick wittedness to make the best of difficult situations. Strength of character underlies their ability to survive threatened disgrace. What connections can we make from the stories of Jesus' grandmothers to our own lives? After all, the purpose of examining the life, their lives is to learn from their example and to be inspired to call on God's ability to empower our witness and action. The women of Jesus' family his grandmothers have been described as powerless but resourceful, intelligent and strong, quick-witted with presence of mind. Who does that describe in your family? The women in Jesus' family tree were loyal, loving, honest, faithful, and influential. Who does that remind you of in your family? Jesus' grandmothers in the faith were courageous, of strong character, um, compassionate, thoughtful, and steadfast. Which matriarch in your family reflects these attributes? Whose life and legacy has reflected this kind of tenacity, resourcefulness, and faith? My brothers and sisters, these stories are for all of us, men and women. These stories are a powerful reminder that the work is ours. 
to commit to action on behalf of those who suffer, to create new initiatives that address contemporary manifestations of the issues faced by women in biblical times. The work is ours to make decisions based on the best outcome for the good of all, and most important, to spread the good news of the gospel. Scripture tells us to live out our faith with courage and joy and to share it with others. We ought to remember the joy God has given us so we can encourage others from a grateful heart. Psalm 96, verses 2 through 4 tell us, Sing to the Lord, praise his name, proclaim his salvation day after day, declare his glory among the nations, his marvelous deed among all peoples. For great is the Lord and most worthy of praise. He is to be feared above all gods. The work is ours to celebrate the gifts of women, to appreciate their contributions, and to validate their lives. The work is ours to spread the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Let us pray. Eternal God, source and giver of every perfect gift, we praise you for the lives and ministries of women of faith, waymakers and trailblazers, leaders and mentors among us today and in your divine presence, named and unnamed throughout history. We honor their life, their life stories and praise you for their wisdom and witness, for their courage and strength, for their endurance and resilience. As we seek to serve, as we seek to love you by loving our name, help us to overcome exhaustion and feelings of defeat. Give us courage and strength to do what is right. Empower us with endurance and resilience to run the race before us. Grant us wisdom in all decisions that we may witness to your love and grace. Help us to keep our eyes on Jesus the perfecter of our faith, the example of our life, and redeemer of us all. In whose precious name we pray, amen.
allowed us to see another day, Lord God, one that we have never seen before. And Father God, for that, we are thankful, Lord God. Lord God, we thank you. We open our eyes this morning. We can see. Our ears we can hear, Lord God. Father God, we have a heart that's beating and a lung that's full of care, Lord God. Father God, we can move our lips, Lord God. And for that, we are so grateful, Lord God. Father God, I just want to take the time and say thank you, Lord God, for the small things that you do for us, Lord God. Now, Father, I lift up those people, Lord God, that may not have you to tell them. May not have them to see with their eyes and hear with their ears, Lord God. But Father God, I just want to say thank you because we can do all of those things this morning, Lord God. Father God, I just want to lift up, Lord God, the homeless for you this morning, Lord God. Father God, I lift up those God all over this world, Lord God. We have those that are going through abuse, Lord God.